Welcome to Scripture of the Day, and we're reading the book of Jeremiah. And yesterday we met the man, your friend to the end, and today we're gonna get the message that God has for his people there in Jerusalem that judgment is coming. And we're coming to you from his nesting place, a women's home that we are partnering with here in Long Beach, California. And yesterday, as we started reading Jeremiah, we showed you some of the insides, the, the old church, the dining room. Well, right now they've got nine moms living here along with their kids and the babies that are going to be born because they were not aborted. So we're praising the Lord for that. We're excited to partner with them. And now we're coming from the outside. Yes, they have a pool here at his nesting place. They have a playground. They've got some nice things for the moms and their kids but they're also kind of coming from uh, uh, an interesting neighborhood here in Long Beach. They got an abandoned building next door to them that uh, sometimes homeless people live behind it. They've got actually a nice park right behind them that they can go at, but sometimes the company there at the park is not so nice. I've even seen some people dealing drugs out there just in the few times I've been here. And so welcome here to Long Beach, California, where we want to plant a church. We want to reach people with the gospel. And we want to start with today's chapter, Jeremiah 2. Now, God is going to bring his message to his people. And we want to really read through this whole chapter and get what the message is. Because the message is that there was a time when Israel loved God, when they responded to God, when God delivered them out of Egypt. And Moses was the leader. Even when Joshua was the leader, there was a time where God's people, they they were really loving their God and they were his people. And God wants to say that those days are long gone. In fact, in Jeremiah chapter two, verse nine, he says, therefore, I still contend with you, declares the Lord. And with your children's children, I will contend. You don't want God contending with you. I mean, this is not good. Remember when Isaiah began, it was like, let's reason together. No, now we're not reasoning together. Now God's contending with them. We're in the final countdown to the time of judgment and God is gonna give his condemnation. Here's why judgment is coming. This is a a famous passage that you should maybe even memorize. Jeremiah 2, 12 and 13, where God says, be appalled, O heavens, at this, be shocked. Be utterly desolate, declares the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So we got two problems here in Jerusalem is what God's saying. Number one is I'm the fountain of living waters and you're forsaking me. You could drink freely. You could come and get free refills of life. You could come and find satisfaction for your soul in a relationship with God where you could experience his presence. But instead of going to the fountain of living waters, you're over here digging your own well, your own cistern, and you're digging this thing up and it can't even hold any water. It's like if you got two cups, two cups, and one you fill with refreshing water uh, living water, and, and, and there it is, full to the brim. Your soul could be overflowing. You could be full of the Spirit of God, full of His life. But instead, you take that life that God wants to give to your soul, and you pour it out into another cup that's got a hole in the bottom of it and can't even hold life. So it's like you're looking for life in a place where you can't even find it. It's just draining out the bottom. You're looking for love in all the wrong places. That's what God says to his people, two evils. I'm the fountain of living waters. You should be taking your shoes off and running around in my fountain and rejoicing in the life that I would give you. But instead you're over here digging a well, pouring all your water, all your life into this well and it can't even sustain it. It can't even satisfy you. This is what so many of us are doing with sin. And by us, I mean our fellow Americans, maybe some watching this video, trying to find life in relationships, in pleasures, in parties. Like I wonder how many people are holding up a red Dixie cup, looking for life in it, and it's empty. It's so empty. I mean, this is, this is a little, uh, passage that we see playing out with the woman at the well. And Jesus came to her and said that if she drank 
From his living water, she would never thirst again. And the woman was like, wow, I'd like to have some of that water. And she came to find out that Jesus was the Messiah. And he told her things about herself. He knew she was in multiple relationships. And now she was with a man who was not her husband. And this woman ended up getting saved that day. And she found something Jesus identified with is being a living water. And it, it's clear in John chapter seven that the living water that Jesus wants to give us is his spirit in our soul, a wellspring of life, a fountain of joy and that could be within us through the salvation that is in Jesus Christ. Do you believe that Jesus satisfies? Do you, when your soul feels dry, run down, thirsty, do you go to Jesus or do you turn to the pleasures Though this woman clearly turned to relationships, perhaps immoral sexual relationships is what it would seem like from what Jesus was saying. And I think so many people are turning towards sexual morality, drunkenness, drugs. They think that those things, I mean, we, we've seen that being filled with the spirit versus drunkenness, like you're trying to get something to fill you up, something to make you under its influence or control. But instead of finding the fountain of living waters, the spirit of life, you're looking for something and then it leaves you empty, guilty, ashamed, hung over, messed up physically. I mean, this, what, what God says to the people of Jerusalem, he could say to the people of LA County, to the people of Orange County today, people are not looking to God in a time of trial in the year 2020, people are not turning to God as the fountain of living waters. They're digging up cisterns that can't even hold water. This, this condemnation of, of God's people in the time of Jeremiah, this is a prophetic word for our time and maybe even for some of these women here at his nesting place. I mean, you know, the issue of abortion is so strong. For 47 years, babies have been aborted legally in the United States of America, but, but really the whole push behind abortion is the acceptance of sexual immorality. It's the acceptance of sex outside of God's context of marriage. And that, I wonder how many ladies have come to his nesting place over there, 35 years of doing ministry here, because they were trying to dig their own well. And they were looking for love in all the wrong places, just like that woman at the well. And that's, what, that's why we're partnering with this ministry is we wanna see more women at the well, find the living water of Jesus Christ and getting saved. But my concern right now is for you watching this video. Like, I gotta ask you, I mean, there's a lot more we can read in Jeremiah, and I don't know if you know this, but Jeremiah is the, the second longest book. So we're gonna be here for a while. This is the second longest book in the Bible behind the Psalms. So God had a lot to say through his prophet to the people at the end when they were about to be judged. But this, these verses, I, I wanna just make the whole video about these two verses, Jeremiah 2, 12 and 13, because we gotta all start with our own hearts. If we're gonna experience revival from the Bible, if we're gonna know the power of the spirit and the fountain of living waters in our soul today, then you've gotta say that you're not committing these two evils. You gotta stop turning. What is the thing that you're tempted to turn to? Is it relationships, sexual morality, drunkenness? drugs, what are you tempted to turn to, to try to find life, but it only leaves you empty and thirsty? Well, we gotta repent of that. We gotta turn away from that. And we gotta turn to the fountain of living waters. Can you go to God today? Like maybe, we, maybe today's cross reference is Psalm 63, and we need to go and say, hey, if, I, if my soul is thirsty, if I'm dry and weary in a land where there is no water, that's America. There's no, there's no fountain of living waters we're gonna find around here. No, I gotta go to the Lord. I mean, are you going to the Lord and finding soul satisfaction? Are you finding the Spirit filling you up giving you life as you get into his word, as you go to him in prayer, as you surround yourself, reach out to your brothers and sisters. Find that fellowship. Find that cup of living water where there's free refills of life and drink deeply, my friend. Drink from the cup 
of life. There's, there's two cups you could drink from, and I wanna encourage you, choose wisely. Drink from the cup of life that is found in your relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, through the Spirit that is empowering you, that is within you. Drink from the cup of life today. Let's have a toast to the life of Jesus Christ. And we'll see you for more from Jeremiah. It has been written. So let it be read right here on Scripture. Oh.